In this video, I'm gonna tell you about the DJ trick that changed the whole scene. It is a story of when preparation meets opportunity, also known as luck. Now, I don't know when you first heard the name James Hype, whether it was 2020 when I was doing two live streams a week, whether it was 2022 when I dropped Ferrari, the biggest dance record in the world, or maybe you're an OG and it was even earlier than that. But I guarantee you, I was doing this for at least 10 years before you'd ever heard my name. So let me tell the story. When I was 18, I got my first resident DJ gig in Liverpool in the UK. It was a Tuesday night in this tiny club called Funky Box, which stayed open till six in the morning. And I used to play for five hours. Now, when I first started, I was so shit. I was such a bad DJ. I even ran out of music on the first week I ever DJed there. But luckily, it was six in the morning. No one fucking remembered. So they asked me to come back. After a while of putting the time in, learning the people, learning the dance floor, and learning my way around the equipment, I actually got quite good. And for the next six years, I was DJing six nights a week in the best clubs in Liverpool and all around cities in the UK. If you do the maths, that is 30 hours of DJing per week, 1,560 hours of DJing per year, or 10,000 hours of DJing. Now this is where the story changes. Now I was DJing every night around the country at this point, but I had my daytimes free. So I'd started to teach myself how to make music and I was started by making remixes of every track so that I could play them in my DJ sets. Like most people, when I started making music, I was really shit. But because I was able to go directly to the club and test what I'd made that day, I was able to improve my music pretty fast. In 2017, I made a record called More Than Friends, which sampled On Vogue, Don't Let Go, a classic 90s R&B record. Now, the track got signed to Warner and it became a hit in the UK and in Germany. And from that point, everything changed. Now, there's a lot of big festivals and clubs around the world that book a lineup every year based off which DJ made the big song. And that makes total sense because if you're someone who's buying a ticket, you wanna go and see the person perform who made your favorite song. However, just because you made a good song, that does not mean you're a good DJ. So after the success of More Than Friends, I started finding myself on these festival lineups for the first time ever. And one day in summer 2018, me and my videographer traveled to Germany to a festival called Ferdinand's Feld. This wasn't the first festival I'd ever played. I'd done a couple before, but I hadn't done loads. And I'd put a set together that was mostly house music with some classic acapellas, some new music, some old music, and of course, my own hit record, More Than Friends. The set was good, but it was pretty ordinary for me, and I'd played a lot of the transitions before at smaller shows. From what I can remember, the festival was pretty good. I think I would have given it eight out of 10. And me and my videographer got on the plane, went back to London, had a look through the videos we'd filmed from the festival and posted some clips on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the usual platforms from 2018. A week went by, we played more shows, we thought nothing of it. And then this happened. So I posted the exact same clip on my Instagram and it went viral on there too. And I was just like, what? I don't get it. Because to me, it wasn't a special clip. It was an ordinary clip to me. It was just my ordinary way of DJing, the way that I'd been DJing in small clubs for years. So the video started to get famous all over the internet. And before long, there were creators from all over the world talking about the video, commentating on it. And then people started making tutorials how to do this James Hype transition. And every time I went on social media, I saw another DJ doing my transition. Before long, I was showing up to clubs and people are holding their phone up saying, do one more time losing it. So this DJ transition that was so ordinary for me to do had become like a phenomenon worldwide. People started coming to see me at shows for the tricks that I was gonna do. My videos were getting millions of views and a movement was born that people wanted real DJing. So I dived headfirst into this new wave of DJing, finding new ways to incorporate even more technical tricks into every set, and I started to get known for it. And now it's five years later, and I'm making this video. Every time I put a set together, I'm trying to find a way to push things forward, to find a new thing creatively that can be done on the decks that makes sense on the dance floor. Every few months, another one of these tricks go viral. Every time I go on social media, I see another DJ who I've inspired 
playing in a similar style to me. And I even made a course on all of my techniques. Nowadays, everyone has the same music on Spotify and the sync button will mix it perfectly for you. So how are you gonna take it to the next level?